Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today I'm going to be doing my updated 2022 NHL mock draft and top 20 prospect rankings. Now I realized I haven't done an updated prospect rankings in almost three months and with a ton of players in the CHL and North American League starting their season over the past few weeks, I thought this was the best time ever to update the rankings because a lot has changed over the past couple of months. But who do I see as the best prospects right now in the 2022 NHL draft? Who do I see in the top 10 and the top 20 and which prospects make today's top 20 official rankings. Watch till the end for all of the prospect rankings for the 2022 draft, all the insight and all the analysis, and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you are new. 60% of the people that are watching are not subscribed. If you like hockey and if you like prospect talk, this channel is the place to be. Now we're just going to start out right now with the top 20. We're going to start out at the 20th spot and my 20th best prospect in the 2022 NHL draft. A lot of 20s there and to keep with the confusion, at number 20 I have American centerman Jack Hughes. Not the New Jersey Jack Hughes but we have our own American centerman Jack Hughes who was born in 2003 and is also still pretty good. Although he's not Jack Hughes good He's still pretty good as a Jack Hughes. Now, he's six foot as a centerman, and I think Jack Hughes, at least this Jack Hughes, is a really interesting and productive and consistent product. He's not going to be as skilled as a uh, past Jack Hughes, but he's a player that has a lot of consistency, has a lot of good play to his game, and so far in the NCAA, as a 17-year-old, has gotten two goals in six games played for Northeastern. He's played pretty well there, and the play driving has been a big aspect. I do think Jack Hughes is going to be a consistent NHL player someday, but def definitely not more than a middle six or three line player, I don't think. And if you get a solid and consistent defensively responsible middle six center at 20th overall, I don't think you're complaining whatsoever. Next up, though, we're going to go to 19 and my 19th best prospect of the 2022 draft. This is a player that I see as a pretty crafty, pretty shifty, and a pretty skilled forward overall that I think has a lot of potential at the NHL level. Next up, I'm going to go with Slovakian forward Philip Massar. Now, Massar has been on my radar for quite a while. Last year, for instance, he in the main Slovakian league, he got 14 points in 36 games played. This year has gone right where he left off with four goals, three assists, seven points in 12 games play. But Massar is a very interesting one. He's under the radar until he needs to just boom out of nowhere, and he does it pretty consistently. But he's a great power play, great offensive forward that drives play pretty well. Is consistent and, and productive in his own end a lot too, and it has a lot of great qualities that I think are projectable to the NHL level. Already playing this well against men is a great sign. But next up at number 18, we're going to go to another American forward, and for my 18th best prospect in the 2022 draft, as of this point, and as of right now, I I have Isaac Howard. A guy that I just love watching on a consistent daily basis. This is a guy that I find getting pretty underrated when it comes to draft stock. A lot of what I've seen have him in the late first round, even second round, but I think Isaac Howard is definitely deserving of a top 20 spot. When it comes to his craftiness, when it comes to his top end skill, there's so much to like there. I really love his skating pass, how he's able to curve around opponents and, and really keep them on his on their toes. I feel like when it comes to Howard, though, he has a lot of projectability as well to the NHL level, even though he is on the shorter side. I think he's going to be a beast in the power play someday, but it's going to be a responsible and consistent, heavy, heavily smart player that gets the job done. And so far this year, that has been the case. In 11 USDP games, has two goals, eight assists for 10 points, and I think he's just going to get better and better as the season goes by. But next up, coming at 17, and at my 17 best prospect spot, I'm going to go with Swedish forward Ludwig Persson. Now, Persson's a very interesting prospect to me. He's a center slash left winger who already turned 18 this October, but he's a prospect that maybe I expected a little bit more from. He has dropped a little bit in my rankings, but more so it's because of other players doing well rather than him doing bad. Even though he has been a little bit disappointing to me in the SHL play, he's still been pretty good in junior 20, getting 13 assists, 5 goals, and 13 games played for 18 points in the season. Still offensively dynamic down there in the juniors, but I do think when it comes to person, he might have a little bit of an adjustment period going to the men's leagues and going to the SHL and eventually onto the NHL. I still think there's a lot of potential to be a middle six player, but a lot of progress needs to be made in this overall game before that happens. But next up, though, we're going to go to, at number 16, a prospect that I've been waiting a long time to finally reach the OHL. He was one of the most unfortunate players that had to be, obviously, not playing last year because the OHL is stopping. But this year, he's played his first OHL games and has been pretty fantastic. Coming in at number 16, I have OHL defenseman Ty Nelson. I really love what I've seen from Ty Nelson so far with the North Bay Battalion. In eight games play, he's gotten two goals, six assists for eight points. But it's not just the points that he's putting up, it's the style of play he's bringing on the offense 
offensive side of things, his skating is absolutely brilliant. This is a guy that can dangle out anybody and has the potential to just do and command the ice whenever he wants. This is a player that has a ton of confidence, a ton of skill, and I don't think is also sacrificing too much on defense. This is a guy that also has some potential there as well. I think there's a lot to build with with Ty Nelson, but so far the blueprint is looking pretty good. Next up at number 15, we're going to go to one of my favorite prospects in this draft. Even though he has dropped quite a bit for me over the past few months, I still think he is a top 20 prospect and has a lot of potential this year. At number 15, I'm going to go with another USA forward in Rucker McGrady. Now, the center slash winger at age 17 doesn't turn 18 until March. I think he's done pretty well so far in the USDP. In eight games, he's gotten four goals, six assists for 10 points, and I think he's really showing some of the skills that he should have brought maybe in the world. Juniors last year, for an example. But I do think when it comes to McGrady, there's a really solid blueprint there in terms of physical, intense, and really characteristic forward play. This is a guy that does not back down, doesn't take many shifts off, and has some really under-the-radar skill as well. I'm hoping he's able to use that skill a lot more throughout this year in the USDP, because I think it's definitely there, and if he uses it, I think he could be a super valuable middle, middle six forward, maybe even top six forward going into the future. But next up at number 14, we're going to move on to an USA defenseman, not a USA forward, but a USA defenseman at number 14. This is a player that I've also been able to see a lot more of this season compared to last, and he has just been so incredibly fun to watch this year in Seamus Casey. Now, Seamus Casey is one of the most interesting offensive players in this draft. As a defenseman, 5'10", 17 years old, he's a player that's done very great with the USDP so far. In 11 games, has 2 goals, 5 assists, 7 points, but it's not just the points that he's putting up, it's the style of play that he's bringing. He does remind me a little bit, I don't like to make comparisons too often, but he does remind me a little bit in terms of style with Quinn Hughes, how he's just able to glide up the ice, get out of the zone very effectively, use his skating in the right ways, which I think is very fundamentally important, and offensively on the power play in terms of offensive attack, this guy just knows how to work. But now we're going to move on to number 13, and we're going to move on to another Swedish forward, and the big thing that I think contrasts between this guy and Ludwig Pershing is the projectability, and at number 13, the 13th best prospect in this draft, I have Noah Usland. Now, Noah Usland is a very interesting one for me. He's listed as a, set, as a center on Elite Prospects. I think he could be a center or a forward or a winger going in the future. But at 5'10", he's a guy that I also have seen some really great free things from in the Junior 20. Two goals, 13 assists for 15 points in 10 games played. He has been amazing there. And I do think there is some more projectability when it comes to his offensive mindset, when it comes to his uh, overall transition game. I think there's a lot more pro qualities in Usland up to this point. And the skill is one of the best in this draft in my opinion, especially on the offensive side of things. I don't think you're sacrificing too much in this guy, and I think he'll be a sponge in terms of learning over the next few years, which is exactly what NHL teams want to see. He's personally a great prospect in this top 15, and will do great things in the future. Now, this next pick might be one of my most controversial in this video, but I'm just going to go out and say it. At number 12, I have from the Winnipeg Ice, Connor Geeky. Now, I know a lot of people are rushing to put Connor Geeky in their top 10s, their top 5s. Even I've seen people putting him inside the top 3. For me, when it comes to Geeky, there is, at first, a lot of pros. This is a guy that is 6'4", 205, has a lot of size and a lot of potential there, and is great in terms of in tight skill and extraordinary play. This is a guy that has a ton of skill with that size, and that is extremely enticing. But I do think the size, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Quinton Byfield a little bit in his, in his draft year, where the size was great, but he wasn't really using it in the correct ways, and that's kind of what, we're, what I'm seeing with Connor Geeky. He's been great in the WHL, and that's there's really no denying that so far. Four goals, seven assists, 11 points, and 11 games played. But when I compare him to his, basically, teammate in Matthew Savoy, I think there's a lot more play driving and a lot more consistency, consistency physically that can be brought with Geeky. Even though there is potential there, I I do need to see more from him to be inside my top 10. Next up, I'm going to go to number 11, and this is a prospect that's kind of been all over the place, but at number 11, I'm going to go with David Juracek. And when it comes to Juracek, there is still a lot of, of potential that will need to be unlocked. He's a very raw prospect that in the Czech League has done well, but also bad at points. I think his defensive play has a long way to go, even if there is potential there. But the maturity and confidence is fantastic. And when it looks, when you look at the points, he's done a fantastic job in terms of productivity. Eight points in 15 check games, which is also a good point to go off of for the next few seasons. He's not close to an NHL ready prospect, but again, the blueprint is there. Now we're going to go to another defenseman here, and I'm going to go on to number 10. This is another defensive prospect that I still have a lot of hopes for, even if he has been a little bit 
disappointing so far this year. Next up at number 10, I'm going to go with Swedish defenseman Elias Seljamansson. Now, to me, Seljamansson has one of the biggest potentials in this draft. Hasn't quite shown it, though, so far this year. 6'1", 172 pounds, and in the Junior 20, has gotten 8 points in 11 games playing. He's been good in the Junior 20, but I thought he also could maybe have some SHL games here or there throughout this season, and if he wasn't going to be in the SHL, I would expect him to be amazing in the Junior 20, which hasn't really been the case, at least from what I've seen in the few games I've seen from him. He's just been good, and, and, and in terms of skating, has done exactly what he's needed to do, has a lot of good traits, but again, the potential is so much more with Sally Monson, and I do think there's a lot more work ethic that can be put into his game. And now we're going to go to easily the most frustrating player in this entire NHL draft. Not because of the player, but because of how he's been handled. At number 9, I'm going to go with Russian winger Danili Yurov. Now, Yurov's situation kind of reminds me of Pat Colson's whole situation in the KHL over the past few years, where he has just not gotten as nearly as much of an opportunity as he should. He's played 15 KHL games, but like the average time on ice for him has been like 2 minutes, which is blasphemy for a player that is as talented as Yurov is. And you can see that in, in the NHL games he's played this. This year. Four games played, two goals, seven assists, nine points. Dominant there. And even last year in the KHL, he got two points in 21 games played. This was a guy that was already among pro players, but has been shafted by his team. Once he gets more of an opportunity, though, I think he'll be just fine. But now moving on to number eight, and this is where we start to get into the elites of the elite in this draft class. And coming at number eight, I'm going to have American centerman Logan Cooley, a player that I've turned around on quite a bit over the past few months, and I started to finally see the hype towards him. He was a guy that I've been seeing in the top 10, top five, top three, even at some points, and I'm finally starting to see that potential. Now he's a center at five foot ten and doesn't turn 18 until next May, which is definitely huge for his development. But this is a player that in terms of skating, in terms of puck handling, in terms of of raw offensive fun. This guy is just dynamic, and I think there's so much potential to work with when it comes to Cooley in the future. I think his skating, though, definitely lends himself to a lot more opportunities on offense and on defense, and he's a guy that can command a play very, very well. Now we're going to go on to number seven. This is also a take that might make me a little bit uh, hate out there to some people, but I do think this player is going a little bit overrated, and I don't think is quite as good as Brad Lambert, at least when it comes to full potential, but he is doing amazing things in the league right now, which definitely deserve credit. At number seven, I'm going to go with Joaquin Kamel. Now, Joaquin Kamel has done just brilliant things in the league of this season. 15 games played, 11 goals, 6 assists, 17 points, but when you look at a lot of the goals, I would say at least like 30% of them, their goal is that just do not happen at the NHL level. And obviously there is some luck involved with what Kamel has done so far, but he still is fantastic goal scorer, has a knack for goal scoring, and the offensive potential is definitely there. And he'll be a beast on the power play someday for sure. I still think he is an elite player in this draft, though I don't think he's as good as maybe some people are making it out to be or the stats are making it out to be. Still a fantastic player though, and the confidence is an all-time high. Now we were talking about Connor Geeky and his lack of physical play so far this season. Season, but coming in at number six, I'm going to give you a player that has done exactly what Connor Geeky should be doing and more and is also playing at a higher level and doing fantastic as well. In my opinion, this guy might be the most underrated prospect in this draft, but I got to give some credit to Slovakian stud, Uri Slavkowski. To me, Slavkowski might be the kind of capo caco, at least blueprint player of this draft, also playing for TPS in Liga, so I also have that comparison. But he's a six foot four left winger, 225 pounds, and he's an he plays like it, unlike Connor so far in the WHL. This last year has done dominant things. The U20 Liga has gone 13 points in six games played as a, as a, as a great 17-year-old. And in the Liga, he's gotten three assists, three points in 12 games played. But the play driving and the offensive consistency and the stats that he's been showing so far in that end have been amazing. He's been outperforming guys like Kamel, guys like Lambert in terms of play driving and possession and all the little details. He has been brilliant among men. Now, speaking of Slovak studs, we're going to move on to one of my favorites of this draft, and in my opinion, the best Slovak in this draft as well. We're going to move on to a defenseman here playing in the Slovakian League in Simone Nemesh. Now, Simone Nemesh is a guy that I do think still has a ton of potential. Even though I've seen him all over the place in draft rankings, I think he is a top five prospect and the best defenseman of this draft. He's a guy I think has so much potential at the NHL level. Kind of reminds me a little bit in terms of what Maurice Sato was having to deal with in his draft year. But Simone Nemesh is a guy that has great skating, great maturity 
at his age. He's a guy that, pa in terms of passing and puck protection, is one of the best in this draft, not even with defensemen. But he's a guy that has great overall talent level. And I do think this is a guy that could prove to be the lead. The lead. He is obviously still quite a bit raw, and there will be a lot of work that will need to be made. But I do think he could become a top four, even potentially top pairing guy in the NHL someday. But you know what? I was going to need to mention his name anyways at some point in this video, so let's just do it. At number four, I'm going to go with Liga centerman Brad Lambert. I know there's a ton of people that have Brad Lambert right now outside of their top five, but I need to just pull the brakes for a second. Brad Lambert might be the most unlucky player in this draft class right now. Probably the most unlucky. He is getting pretty much auto right now if we want a comparison to make. Brad Lambert hasn't been great by any means, but he's also done a lot of the right things and has just gone so snake -bin. It is crazy to see. I don't know what the hockey gods are doing with our finished players, but guys like Lambert, guys like Radu have just gone so snake -bin in their draft classes. It's crazy to see. But even with Lambert not doing that great, he's still a second line center on his team. He's still getting a ton of responsibility and is still playing great in the little areas. He's still a fantastic prospect and I think on the right team and eventually he'll end up getting those points and getting them on the board eventually, finally, because he definitely deserves it. Now we're going to go on to number three though and inside the top three, I'm at number three going to go with Russian winger Ivan Miroshchenko. Now Miroshchenko has been pretty good so far this year and I don't think he's been dominant by any means the VHL, but I think he's done a lot of the right things and has improved in some areas, but that shot, that offensive makeup is still brilliant, and on the power play, he's been doing some amazing things as well in the VHL, but he's going to be a power play offensive quarterback that does a lot of the right things, might need a centerman that puts him in the right direction in the NHL level, but I do think this is a guy that if you can match him with the right guy at C, could do so much right and be again an offensive option that not a lot of teams have in their system right now. But now we go on to the top two, and I want to say this right now. In terms of the overall play, if we combine all these years together, obviously the number one player is quite a bit ahead. But in terms of this year's play from both these guys, I don't think it's too far apart. And I might actually prefer the second overall pick's play so far compared to the first overall pick. But at number two, I'm going to go with WHLer from the Winnipeg Ice, Matthew Savoy. Matthew Savoy has been elite, to say the absolute least, in the WHL this season. His point numbers have been skyrocketing, but it's for a good reason. This guy is play driving at an elite rate among draft eligibles this year. This is a guy that in, in terms of puck protection and passing percentages, this is a guy that has done so, so well on even strength and the power play and the projectability is there. I kind of see with Matthew Savoy a little bit of New Jersey Devils Jack Hughes, where the skating is such uh, is on such an elite level. The puck protection, the ability to pass is on such a high level that I feel like it will translate enough to the NHL level. Even though he might not be NHL ready at this point, this is a player that once he eventually gets there and gets some more physicality in his game, will be almost unbeatable on the power play and on even strength. But now we got to move on to number one. I did say that Matthews Voy has done better, in my opinion, than Shane Wright has done in the OHL, and I do stick by that, but at number one, I'm still going to go with OHL or Shane Wright. I think Shane Wright has been good so far in the OHL. He's had some good moments, some really solid ones, but I don't think he's been as impressive as I think a lot of people were expecting. Obviously, he didn't play in the OHL last year and was playing injured in the U18s. Maybe he's still dealing with that, and obviously, he's the first OHL games in two years, so that does affect things. He has been just good, in my opinion, right? now he's a point per game. Not really dominating as much as some people might expect. I don't know if he's ever not going to be my number one pick right now, but it could maybe change my perspective if he continues to just play all right like this while Savoy is playing at his amazing level. Still though, I would pick Shane Wright number one, and I think he is the best prospect in this draft. But that'll be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for more mock drafts and prospect talk just like this. Make sure you comment down below what you agree and disagree with my prospect rankings. And who do you want your favorite team to take in this draft? Let me know your thoughts. And where do you guys see the players going in this draft as well? Let me know your draft orders. Of course, make sure you share this video with anybody you guys know, any hockey fans you might know, and click on this card for all my hockey prospect stock right in one playlist. My name is Nathan. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.